Welcome everyone to our very first video in the Thinkorswim tutorial series. Today we're going to be walking you through how to download and install Thinkorswim and give you a quick tour of the platform's layout in order to get you started. Of course, the very first thing we have to do before we jump into Thinkorswim is actually download it. So to do that, what we're going to do first is head over to the schwab.com website and just go ahead and get logged into your account. From there, what I want you to do is head up to the trade tab. So the second tab at the top of the screen, and then within the drop down menu down below, we're going to go ahead and find the trading platforms tab over here and go ahead and open that up. Now, from there, the very first thing you're probably going to notice is this big blue button down here that says learn how to enable thinkorswim, but I do not want you to click on that. From those of you who are originally from Schwab who already have Street Smart Edge downloaded to your computers, what that is going to do is actually switch you over from Street Smart Edge over to Thinkorswim. So definitely do not click on this button until you're absolutely ready to give up Street Smart Edge and actually move over to TOS. But what you can do, and anyone can do this without worrying about losing access to anything, is coming down here below where you're going to see a picture of all the different Thinkorswim platforms. The very first one here, the Thinkorswim desktop, this is going to be the one that we actually do this series on. This is going to be the one that has all the cool tools and features and the one that you see people use online and talk about. This is the one we're going to discuss as well. The one you see just to the right of it, the Thinkorswim web version. This is going to be a much more simplified version of Thinkorswim and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a lot more simplified, meaning there's a lot less you can do on it. There's a lot less you can customize and it's basically what you see is what you get. So again, what we're going to do is come over here and download Thinkorswim by simply clicking on this big button here that says download Thinkorswim desktop. Just like any other program you install on your computer, it's going to download a file and you're simply going to open that and run through all the steps, which we're not going to do in this video, but it's pretty straightforward. Once you've done that, you've got it installed to your computer. You're now going to see a little Thinkorswim desktop icon somewhere on your computer, and it'll either be a little green icon kind of like this, or maybe a blue icon. Either way, we're simply going to double click on that. And from there, you're going to see a little login window. You're also going to notice that at the very bottom of this login window, there's going to be two little buttons down here, one for live trading, which is going to be your real account, your real money, and then paper money just to the right of that. Like it sounds, that's going to be the fake version of Thinkorswim. It's going to be exactly the same, but it'll give you, I think, about $100,000 of play money, and you can actually practice how to use this thing. Either way, go ahead and pick one of these, and then go ahead and log in. Same user ID, same password you normally use for the schwab.com website. And then once you log in, this should be the very first page you see. And honestly, even though they call it the home screen, and you can see the button up here at the very top right hand corner called home screen, you are probably never going to see this page ever again. We could talk about it a bit. You can customize it and change what you're seeing here. But honestly, what we're instead going to do is focus on the things I actually think you're going to use on a daily basis. So the very first thing I want to mention is that you're going to notice that Thinkorswim is kind of split up into two separate screens. You're going to first notice that over here on the far left hand side of the screen is kind of a little sidebar with hopefully some helpful information that you actually might want to keep track of. You'll notice up here at the moment, I've got the account info section, which even though they're all kind of blanked out at the moment, this is going to be a breakdown of all of your account balances. So how much cash do you have in the account? How much money can you spend on things like options on stock? How much leverage do you have if you want to borrow as much money as you possibly can? This is where you're going to find all of that. Right below there, we can also see a little live news window. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's a little window that just shows you recent news articles. And at the moment, it's basically just all recent news. Right below that is a little trader TV window, which again is exactly what it sounds like. It's literally just a TV channel and you could actually come down here and change the channel if you wanted to. We could flip that over to CNBC US, Futures Now, I mean, whatever it is we want to see, this is where we could access it. Here's a nice little video of Jim Cramer, I'm sure giving us some great tips, great advice, but for right now, we're going to go ahead and pause that for the time being. And then below that, we also have a nice little watch list of stocks we might want to track. And then this is a little quick chart, which I know is blank right now, but let's go ahead and throw in a symbol in there. And now we just see a nice little chart of what Apple's been doing lately. 
We're definitely going to talk about this side panel more in depth later on, but I will tell you, you can kind of customize this to actually see the things that are important to you. So at the moment, let's say we don't actually want to see this little chart for Apple right down here. What I could do is just come over here to the three little lines in the upper right hand corner of that window, simply click on that. And then down below, I could either detach it, which basically just creates a separate little window of it. And then I could kind of move it wherever I wanted to. I could actually click on switch gadget and basically just change what this thing does. Maybe I instead want to have another watch list here, or maybe I want to have level two data here. That's what I could do here, or I could just outright delete it. So for right now, let's go ahead and get rid of this. And now instead, if I want to add something new in this big blank section I've got down here, I'm simply going to come down here to the lower left hand corner and click on this little plus sign. From there, we can then see all the different little windows I could add to the side panel. So I could add account info again, I could add a little calculator, or what I could do is in this case, add, let's say level two data. Once I've added it, if I were to throw in a symbol in here, so again, we'll throw in AAPL. Now down below, I can actually see all of the open orders resting out there to buy or sell Apple. Again, this might not be something you actually want to use, but I just want to make it clear this little side panel here on the left is meant to be things that are actually important to you. So definitely take some time, customize it how you want to, but it's nothing too crazy. Just a nice little nifty side panel that follows you everywhere we go as we navigate around the platform. Now, besides that side panel, you're also going to notice that on the right hand side, we've got this big screen. And this is honestly where you're going to spend most of your time. It's where all of the tools are going to appear that we talk about later on. And the way we change what's on this window is, of course, these little tabs up here in the upper left hand corner. So up here, you're going to notice the monitor tab, trade, analyze, scan and so on. There are a lot of them up there. And honestly, you're probably not going to use half of them that are up there. But if we go through them quickly, if we come up here to the top and click on the very first one here, the monitor page, this is really what I would consider your home page. Here down below, you can currently see I've got the activity and positions tab selected, and this is basically your home page. It's where you can keep track of all of your open orders, all of your filled orders for the day, all of your open positions, how you're doing, if you're up, if you're down. That's what this page is for. You can also see up here at the top, there are some other tabs down below the monitor page, like the account statement, which is more of a historical view of your account. So what did I do in the account last month, last week, last year, whatever it is I want to see, this is again, more of a historical page. You've also got FX reports or Forex reports. If you trade Forex, the strategy roller, which for those of you who sell covered calls against your positions might be something that we take a look at later on. But honestly, if you're coming to this page, the monitor page, what you're really going to spend most of your time on is activity and positions. Next up, we've got the trade tab which although it has a lot of tabs down here, like all products, Forex trader, futures trader, what this is really made for is people who trade options. So if you do trade options, this is one place we could come to see a nice big option chain for the stock that we're looking at. We could come up here and access Forex trader or futures trader if we want a different layout setup, depending on what it is we're trading. But honestly, most people are gonna stick to the all products tab. Next up, you also have the analyze page, you're going to see here at the moment, we do have the fundamentals tab selected, which if I were to actually throw in a symbol in here, again, we'll just throw in Apple for now. This is one place we could come to get a nice breakdown of the stock we're actually looking at. So here at the top, we can see what the analysts think about this company. So do they have a buy rating? Do they have a sell rating or a void? We can see a little description of what the company actually does. If we scroll down a little bit further, we can also see some basic fundamentals of the company. So things like earnings per share, dividends per share, price to earnings ratio. And if we scroll down even further, we can basically just see some additional highlights of the company. And at the very, very bottom, we can see a breakdown of their revenue. If I scroll all the way down. Now, besides this fundamentals tab up here at the top, there is a lot of really cool stuff in here, like the risk profile page. This is a great place to come, especially if you trade options or futures, you're trading more complex stuff and you want to really get down and dirty with your, your risk or your Greeks. This is one place to come. You've got economic data, which is basically every financial report you could possibly think of that the government keeps track of. That's where we could come for again, economic data. And you've also got the earnings tab, which again, if we throw in a symbol up here, 
you can see a breakdown of Apple's last eight quarters of earnings, how they did, how much money they made versus what was expected, what happened to volatility around those earnings. But again, just some nice info around their earnings. Next up, if we come up here to the scan tab, this is exactly what it sounds like. Later on, we're going to discuss it, but this is where you can come to actually create scans to find things, find stocks that you might actually want to trade. We've also got the Market Watch tab, which at the moment, this little quotes page right here is basically just an expanded watch list. We can see a nice big screen of a lot of different columns of things that we might want to track. We can also simply add symbols in here. And again, I will discuss all of this more in depth. This is meant to be just a little quick overview. But if I were to come here and type in the symbol, hit enter on the keyboard, we have now added Apple to this watch list. At the top, there's also a nice little visualize feature here where we can actually see how the overall market did today. So if I were to come down below and let's say I open up, I don't know, how about the S&P 500 today? So now here we can see how Nvidia did, how Apple did, and of course the size of the square is gonna tell you how big that company is in relation to the overall index. And if you hover your mouse, it'll tell you how much it was up, how much it was down. And you can also see a nice little calendar up here too, to just get an idea of some upcoming events or recent events, maybe earnings, upcoming dividends, that kind of thing. The final tab I'm gonna mention for today is actually gonna be the charts tab up here, which is probably where most of you are gonna spend most of your time in Thinkorswim. And if we look here, there's actually three different tabs down here, charts, flexible grid, and product depth. We can probably throw this product depth out for now. Most of you are probably never gonna use this tool. But if we look here, the charts is exactly what it sounds like. Down below, we can see a nice big chart of how Apple is doing. We can change everything about this chart. We can also change how many charts we're seeing. And again, don't worry, we are gonna cover this much more in depth in the later videos in this series, but I will point out that a lot of this stuff is incredibly simple. It just takes a little bit of practice to get the hang of it. So later on, you're gonna learn things like how to add multiple charts to this window, like I'm doing now by simply coming up here to the upper right and identifying that I wanna see four charts on this screen. I could then throw in different symbols if I wanted to. I could throw in, hey, I wanna see Microsoft, or I wanna see Google in here, or I wanna see Netflix in the lower left-hand corner. I could also zoom in on one particular chart if I wanted to by simply coming up to the upper right-hand corner of the chart I wanted to zoom in on and coming down here to maximize that cell. And then if I wanted to zoom out, I would simply come up here to the upper right, hit this little back arrow, and now I'm back to the full four chart view. But again, just as a little recap, we went over how to download it. And then once you're in the platform, Thinkorswim is basically broken out into two separate sections. You've got your side panel over here on the left, a little panel that follows you everywhere you go. And then over here on the right, you've got a more structured page where even though you can't really customize it maybe as much as you might have been thinking, this is where we can access all of our positions on the monitor page, see how we're doing. Maybe we would go to the trade page if we wanted to trade options or stock or anything else, honestly. We could go to the scan tab to create scans and actually find things that we might want to trade, whether that be stock or options or futures. Or finally, we could go to the charts page when we actually want to see how the stock is doing. Or again, if we're trading, we could also do it from here as well. But hopefully that quick little intro gives you an idea of just what is in Thinkorswim, how to get around a little bit, how to access these little tabs up here at the top to see the different tools inside of here. But if you're interested in learning more, please stick around and check out our next video. And in this next one, we're gonna go over how to access your account, how to customize your workspace, and how to manage your actual positions in the account. So please click on the next video down below in order to see that. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next one.